Hi, it's Jan here from JB Crafts. Thank you for joining me today. And if this is the first time that you've come across me, welcome to the channel. I am an avid paper crafter. I used to do this for a living and now found myself with lots and lots of free time. So I get to craft with pretty much whatever I want now. So uh, minus the restrictions of, uh, of when I was working. So yeah, I've got a beautiful uh, concept card again for you today. And this one's actually for my daughter. Uh, it's her birthday card, which was last weekend. So I've sort of left it until today to pop it on the channel, just in case she got a sneaky peek before her birthday. So my youngest daughter, um, and this is what we're actually going to make today in the tutorial. Uh, I just want to pop at the beginning. I will apologise at the beginning of the uh, the video. I know there's a couple of you commented on the videos asking about the little doggo and whether you can hear her snoring or not. Uh, she is laid down here at the side of me. <coughs> her daddy's gone to work and she used to get extremely stressed when he went out she's very much a daddy's girl uh, but she is settling a bit more now but the downside of that is that she's crashing in here in the craft room with me and she can snore for England and any other country out there so yeah my apologies if you hear the snoozing it is Lacey uh, I have put pictures of her on my Facebook page so a lot of you guys know who she is uh, and I'm just really happy that she's settling better now when he goes out so uh, plus side and a negative side but uh, I hope you'll bear with me with that so back to the card style today, we've got a six, well, it's just under six inches square because I've made this from um, two pieces of A4 cardstock. The largest I can get out of that is five and three quarter inches square. So this will fit nicely in a six by six envelope. And it's what's known on um, a lot of the uh, channels as a lever card. Um, it's not my own design. I have seen many of these about and I do tend to spend quite a bit of time on Pinterest having a look through different ideas. And I just love the idea of this. So you've got the basic fold on a card. So it has a fold down the left hand side here. But when you open it, the panel is constructed that you get this little element pop out through the front and then you've got the rest of the card on the inside so if I stand it up and show it you from your, the top there you can see that we've got we have one piece that creates the outside element of the card and then the second piece sticks here and we've got a series of folds and then we've got that lovely little decorative piece that pops out through the front of the card there really simple to do it's not difficult you don't need many dies i've just used some square nesting dies uh, to make this along with your guillotine uh, to, to you know to sort of check your measurements so i'm going to pop that one to one side this is actually going to her uh, for her birthday so again I've put a nice um, sentiment on the back there and I will write my message to her on the back and then this is going to go in a, a matching envelope for her birthday as part of her uh, her gift so yeah I'm going to pop that one up to one side and I'll bring in the pieces that we're going to use for the main card base so once you've got this part of it um, you head around this part of it the rest of it is just decoration it's just mats and layers and I'll give you all the sizes as always as we go along through the tutorial so i've used some cream card stock and this is not quite as thick as what i would normally use for a card base it's about 270 gs 260 270 gsm i would normally work with a 300 gsm for a card base um, but because of the nature of this card i need two pieces of it and the fact that we're sticking it together and adding the mats and layers makes it substantial enough when i've got the two pieces together it's it's quite a decent uh structure so you're going to need two pieces the same size and I've cut mine to 11 and a half by five and three quarters because this is sort of the largest size I can get here in the UK out of my A4 card and I'm going to score this one down the centre at five and three quarters to create a fold card so the outside of the card is just your normal fold and then we're going to cut an aperture into the front of it and then I'm also going to do a little bit of scoring on the second piece and I've just written the score lines down here for you. So we'll work through those together to get started and then I can show you where to put the cuts in. So I've got my scoreboard and my um, scoring tool to go with it. So the first piece I am literally going to score on the long side 
at five and three quarter inches. So this is just literally popping a score line down the centre. And this is actually going to be the outside card blank. I'm going to give that a fold and a burnish in a second. And I've got that five and three quarter square. And then I'm just going to leave those visible because we're going to use those score lines now. So if I just pop this to one side here on the second piece, I'm going to score at two and seven eighths. The centre line again at five and three quarters and eight and five eighths. So essentially what I'm doing, um, I'll pop that middle line in again at five and three quarters. So that's my score line in the centre. And then these two are just half of that measurement. So I've halved the five and three quarters. The first one's at two and seven eighths. And then because I've just got my smaller scoreboard out, I'm going to flick mine round here and do the two and seven eighths at the other side. Now, if you've got a wider scoreboard, that second one here or the third score line is at eight and five eighths. But I just find it easier to flip it round. And I've now got four equal panels on here. So I don't know if I just tilt that slightly. We've got four equal vertical lines now on one of them. I'm going to turn it to the short side and just in one section, let me move those measurements out of the way now, just in one part. So this first rectangle coming up to the first score line, I want to score it at three quarters of an inch. But I am going to stop when I get to that score line. So if I just put my ruler along here, this is the score line that we created at two and seven eighths. So I want to score at three quarters of an inch down this side and then I'm going to flip it over and these are cut lines so it doesn't matter that the score lines are on different sides and I'm going to do the same again at three quarters of an inch down to here okay so if I just hold that up and see if we can just grab those lines I've got the equal panels across and then a three quarters of an inch strip coming down to that first horizontal score line and a three quarters of an inch strip at that side so that's all my scoring done and then what i want to do is from the side with the two extra score lines in i'm going to create a mountain fold at this side first of all and again just i always double check that these lines run parallel when i'm folding before i actually burnish those lines into place so this is the one that had the two little three quarter inch panels in i'm then going to do another mountain fold and again if that's a new term to you if you're a new crafter all that means is that i'm folding the cardstock away from myself and it's creating the fold at the top of the mountain the opposite of that on the last fold is a valley fold so i'm going to fold this towards me now and again just make sure that everything's lined up nicely and then this time I've got, instead of having the, the, the fold at the top, the folds in the valley. So we've got two that at the top and one that's in the bottom. And I'm just going to burnish that line in my card blank as well. So just make sure that those meet together nicely. Put my burnish line in there. And then you've actually got the outside of your card. And then this one is going to fit in here and in here like so. So you're going to get that kind of cube in the center here now we need to do a little bit of work on this one and we need to do a bit of work on the outside here so first of all i'm going to cut my apertures i'm just going to pop this one to one side for a second and i'm going to cut my apertures so i've got a set of um square nesting dies um these are a stitch square it doesn't matter we're not actually going to see the stitched element very well because we want the aperture not the actual die cut and i've taken the two largest ones from my set um so the largest one let me just give these a measure for you the largest one is approximately four and a half inches squared and the next one down is four inches squared so i'm going to work with those two and I'm going to take the smaller one to start off with. So this is the four inch square. So if you've got something around about that, it doesn't have to be exact, but it will affect the other measurements that I'm going to give you. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this, I'm going to open the card up because I'm only going to cut through the front section here. And I need to get this lined up as pretty accurate as I can 
so that I've got the same border all the way round. So I'm just going to sort of place it by eye to start off with. And I think if I remember rightly, it was about an inch to the outside. Yeah, so from the inside of the die to the outside, I've got about an inch. Yep, yeah. and then I'm going to rotate and see that I've got the same. Yeah, that was a pretty good guess there. Yep, so from the inside of the die to the outside of the card, we've got that inch. So I'm going to pop that one in place now with a little bit of tape. And I'm just going to pass that through my die cutting machine. Now, a lot of you that follow me know that that's behind me. So I'm going to bring my plates into play. And all I'm going to do is pop this on my smaller plate. I don't need to run the back of it through... Um, the die cutting machine i'm going to put the fold line on the edge of my plates because these go through my gemini sideways like this i've got sufficient space there and what i am going to do i think i've got yeah a piece of copier paper i'm just going to place that over the top just to prevent the front of the card getting any scar lines on it so uh, i'm going to put the others on top here now and I'm just going to pass this through my Gemini. Just sits behind me. Uh, I have a, a, a set of drawers behind me. And it just sits behind so that I can flip round in my chair and pass it through the uh, machine. I will one of these days try and get a craft room tour done for you. I know so many people have asked me if they can see the craft room. Uh, it's in my conservatory. And I don't have the, you know, the, even though it's a, a decent size, I still end up having issues with where to put things. So the one day when I get it tidy enough to actually brave the camera, I will actually pop it uh, on a, a video for you guys to have a look. This bit's actually spare at the minute, so I'm just going to pop that to one side. Obviously, yours won't have the numbers written over it, so it's a perfect square to use for something else. Um, I'm going to pop the die to one side as well. And we've now got the front of our card there. Let me just pop the plates down for a second. I'm going to need them again in a minute. Just reinforce that fold. And we've now got, you can see, we've got that aperture here in the front of the card. So this is my outside section. OK. And then if I bring back in the piece that we're going to put in the centre, this is going to stick together on that panel where we made the valley fold. And it's going to stick into the back of the frame now at the moment you can see that we've got cardstock here that we don't need and that's where these two little three quarter of an inch panels come in so now you can do this with a trimmer you can do this with your scissors however you feel comfortable but i'm actually going to cut down these lines so the three quarter of an inch one i'm going to take the score line away and this bit's hidden so, you know, if you are a little bit wobbly with your scissors, it's not the end of the world because this bit will be hidden behind the outside part of the card. And then I'm going to cut down this one and I'm going to cut to this side. So I'm literally cutting away the score lines right down to where that horizontal score line is here. And we're actually going to cut this piece out. So I'm going to fold those two little strips back now and I'm going to use the score line again here to just cut down that edge and take that score line out. So I'm cutting the whole panel away now, just slightly to the left of that score line so that I've got a nice neat edge when it's finished there. And again, that bit's spare for the time being. So you should end up with something that looks like this. So you've got your valley fold at this end, a mountain fold in the middle. This was the mountain fold and we've now got these two little pieces sticking out here. So I'm going to bring in the glue and pop this together so that it can be drying. And I am going to use my all purpose glue. It's the best one, in my opinion, for popping cardstock and paper together. And what I'm going to do is on the back of this panel that we folded forwards on here, I'm going to add my glue here. So I've got just the one of those panels that we scored. OK, and then what I'm going to do is line that up with the back of the card blank. So open it up. My aperture's on the left hand side and I'm going to line this up here with the back of my card. 
and just make sure that those edges are running nice and parallel. Spread that glue out inside and that's the first one of our sticks. Now I've actually managed to get a little bit of glue on the outside there but that's the beauty of this particular glue. It just runs away, just rubs away and if there is any residue I can just bring in my glue eraser and just take that off there, that's fine. Okay. And then these two pieces here are going to return and stick to the front of the card so that when we look through the front now, we haven't got that piece of card. The piece that I just cut away was actually in here and that's what I don't want. We need to create room for that panel, that lever to come through the front. So all I'm going to do now then is I'm going to put glue on those two little three quarter inch tabs that we made like so and the same at this side and then I'm going to close it all up this way so I've popped it back on itself folded it down and these two now should fit nicely and securely and the whole thing should fold down flat and the reason I cut them at three quarters of an inch was so that they hide nicely behind the front panel of the card. So again, I'm just going to pop my block on there and just let all that dry in place while we go on to the next part. And then I'll show you what that structure looks like before we start adding the mats and layers. So I'm just going to pop that to one side. And then we're going to work on the other areas. So I've actually chosen two complementary papers so I've got a really sort of um, slate grey with little teal dots polka dots on and then I've got a gorgeous uh, piece of pattern paper here that's got some uh, grey floral work on it you can see it better on this particular design both out of my stash that I've had a while and the reason I chose those colours is because her lounge her living area is all done in grey and teal so hopefully when she pops this out on the uh, the shelving unit it all sort of matches in so that's where we're going to go so we need to create the frame that's going to go around the front so that's the first piece that I'm going to work on and I've actually got a piece here that measures five and a half inches square so this is going to fit nicely. It's a quarter of an inch smaller than my card blank. It's going to give us that nice little cream border and we need to create that aperture inside. Now you've got a couple of choices here. You can use the same die that we used originally. Just move my uh, ruler out the way there. So this is the one that I cut the aperture in the front of the card. And you can use the same one on here if you wish and you will get a thicker border that comes up to the edge of the card here but I wanted some cream showing at either side now there's a little bit of difference in the width but I'm not too worried about that I think the overall thing I wanted the cream to frame this center part rather than the polka dot one coming all the way up to the edge so again it's entirely up to you so if you want it all the way up to the edge you can use the smaller one the same size as the aperture but i'm actually going to go up to that larger side which was my four and a half inch square and i'm going to center this one same as i did before in the middle of that piece that was five and a half inches square and i'm just going to eyeball it initially and then just double check again with the ruler that we're approximately in the right place. And this time it was about five eighths, I think. Five eighths of an inch. Five eighths. Yeah. And then this way should be the same because we're working with the square. So from the outside edge of the card to the inside edge of the die, I've got that five eighths of an inch. I think the years and years of working in school and doing uh, wall displays, I do have an eye for, for being able to get things straight now, I must admit. So again, I'm just going to pop this in my smaller um, plates here for the Gemini, pop that on and then just excuse me one second while we pass that one through the machine again. And that will do its job to create that aperture. So again, and we bring this back now, I've got um, those ones and we can move the other plate there. 
and then pop this one through here just being gentle with my tape and again this piece um is actually spare so i keep all these pieces together all right and pop that to one side so we've now got our little frame here and this is going to fit nicely this is the one that we're going to pop around the front okay so our main card blank should be uh, nice and dry now so you can see here we've got that mechanism that opens up now and these two pieces were stuck on the return and we've now got our areas that we can decorate. And then I'm going to stick my centre panel here so that it actually sticks through the aperture and you get that lever effect. So on all the pieces that I've got, I've used a couple of inks. Just you know that I like to edge the, the, um, the edges of all my paper and cardstock and everything. So on the grey one. I've used um, anthracite from my opaque pigment inks from Spectrum Noir. And I'm just going to also do where I've cut it now, do that inside edge. Because my paper's got a white core, it just takes off that edge of the paper. And it's something that I'd, I do with most of mine. It's not necessary. I know some people will go straight to the, uh, the, the sticking stage. But once you start doing this, I think it does make a difference and my OCD dictates you know that I've got a white edge showing on a cream card and that interferes with my head so just humour me and then on the um, lighter coloured paper I've gone round it with the parakeet which is also the same range the opaque pigment inks from Spectrum Noir which has picked out the teal colour that I've used for matting and layering and the extra embellishments so what we're going to do then is pop this one straight onto the front here. And again, I'm going to stay with that uh, glue. So I'm just going to pop some round the edge of here. Doesn't need masses of glue. It does the job nicely. And then I am going to bring it along the inside of the aperture as well to make sure that it is sealed. And then we're going to drop this one onto the front. <laughs> like so and then just wriggle it into place i don't know what we've got going on there i've got managed to get something on there but we're going to, we're going to cover that up i think so yeah the wet glue just allows you to sort of move everything into place there and we're going to pop that one down i don't know what i've managed to get on there bit of ink by the looks of it must have got something on my fingers i think it might have come off my block actually i've just placed the block on it haven't i okay so that's the first part of it and then we're going to move to the inside now you can decorate it should lay flat when you've got it all open like so you can decorate as much or as little as you wish i just chose to decorate these two panels and i left this one and the inside actually clear so to create those two panels, then I've done one each of the papers. I've got one for here and I've got one to go in this side here. And then my top is going to stick on this bit, which should hopefully cover up the little uh, the little mark I've just found. So we've actually got two matte layers in the teal. This is just linen cardstock that are five and five eighths tall by two and three quarters wide. And then my paper layers on top are five and a half by two and five eighths so i've got a very very narrow eighth of an inch less which has given me that sixteenth of an inch border and all i'm going to do is pop one of these on the outside edge and one of them in that middle panel so this one is going to go on here so i've now got two layers of that cardstock even though i said it was a slightly lighter weight I've got two layers of cardstock stuck together and then a card mat and a paper layer, which is actually building up the strength now of the card. And then I'm going to do the same with this one. And we're going to pop that on that second internal panel just to give it a little bit of decoration. Now, you could, if you wished, if you want to actually keep this as a plain one and pop, if you don't like putting the sentiments on the back of the card, you can actually made this one a plain one and pop your sentiment in this panel here. So I'm going to pop this one in here like so. 
and there's just a tiny little border around the outside of the cream and again give that one a press into place okay so that's the inside section so again i'm just going to make sure that that marking i think that mark was possibly my block is getting ready for a good clean i think but i am just going to pop that back on there to keep that nice and flat while it dries and then we will come on to making the element that fits on the front here so you need something bearing in mind that first square in my case was four inches square you need it just a fraction smaller so that it will come through that aperture without catching so i've got a very very tiny gap here and a very tiny gap at the top otherwise if i cut it with that same die oops it's not going to come through the aperture properly it's going to stick so all i did was take a bit of the teal again and i've cut it an eighth of an inch smaller so the aperture was four inches I've cut my cardstock at three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. And that's just going to give me enough clearance for that to actually pop through the aperture that we've created. So that's my background layer. And then I went with that nice patterned paper for the front. And this one is three and three quarters by three and three quarters. And we're going to pop this one straight over the top. And again, I've applied the parakeet ink just around the edge straight from the ink pad around the edge of this one just to tie it all together and I'm going to stay with the same ink there and pop this one on as a mat layer and then it's just time to decorate in however you wish okay so this one's just going to sit and again I've got that tiny tiny skinny border I don't want anything massive and i do tend to pick them up when i'm i don't know why i can get them straighter when i've got them at this angle than i can when it's on the desk so yeah just got that nice and straight so it's got that little skinny border all the way around the outside and then give it a press just to move that glue about underneath and that one will do its trick okay so for some embellishments then uh let's move the uh the squares out of the way for a second so I had a rummage through my uh, stash. I wanted something to go on the inside here. When I'd finished, I felt it was just a little bit plain on the inside. I had a rummage through my stash. And these are um, from the Elements range by Gemini. And they are the decorative swash border dies. So this one's the Delightful Daisy. And it is approximately six inches long. And what I did was cut that in the teal cardstock here. Obviously, it's this way when it's been cut out. And I've just trimmed it slightly so that it's the right length for the inside of my card. OK, so that's going to be the embellishment for the inside. And then the outside, um, I've just used one of my happy birthday dies. So I've got a die set here that's got the lettering and then the little surrounding matte layer. OK, again, I've had the. it's not even got a name on this. I've had these in my stash. I've got a set of them that are just happy birthday dies. Um, and we're going to use this one to create the detail at the front here. OK, so I cut the matte layer again in the teal in this one. So we've got that matte layer cut out like so. And then for the front, I just wanted it to have a little bit of extra sheen on here. So this is cut from the scraps that were left over from the cream cardstock that I made the card base from. So you end up with all those little pieces that we cut out that are spare. And what I've done to make it, I don't know whether the camera can pick up the fact that it is just slightly glossy. And again, you can do this with embossing powder if you wish. But I find the quickest way I find to do this is I've got a, a roll of clear uh, packing tape uh, it's a decent width as well is it about let's have a look about it's just under two inches wide so all I did was cut a scrap of the cream card cover it with the clear packing tape and then die cut through it and the die cut straight through it with the Gemini and I've cut this three times so I had two in plain cream card stock and then the top one that had that extra um, little layer of shimmer uh, on there as I say I don't know whether the camera can pick it up or not it's just flashing in the daylight here at me with the the shiny surface there so that's going to go on the front of here 
like so. So we can actually stick that one down. And again, I don't know why I always tend to revert to my tacky glue when I start putting embellishments on. I think it's because it's got the fine tip applicator on. So it gives me a little bit more precision. And I'm just going to put a few dots on the back of here. So that we can secure this one on the front of that little mat layer that we've created. Now, this could be a, a coloured image. It could be some decoupage. As long as what you're putting on top doesn't go outside of that three and seven eighths inch frame, we're good to go. So, like I said, it could be a coloured image on here. It could be a floral image. It could be a set of flowers that you've made. It could be a decoupage piece. I just went with the, um, the actual sentiment here on mine. I'm just going to leave that as it is for a second and then this piece is going to go in the back I just felt that this needed sort of zhuzhing up a little bit there so did we go straight down the middle just slightly to one side I think so just slightly so again I'm just going to pop the same glue on the back of here so just tiny tiny little dots if you remember to put your double sided adhesive, you could do it with that. You could do your embellishments with the dot runner if you have one of those. I do tend to go to my wet glue more often than not. I just find that you get the longevity of a seal with the wet glue and it gives you that little bit of insurance to wriggle it into place. And what I often do so that it doesn't squidge out too much is just tap it off on my cloth so that I haven't got too much glue on the back. And then I'm going to drop this in place just slightly off centre. And I've cut it to the length that fits. And then I've got my wax paper there to just give it a nice press into place. So that's that one on the inside. OK, so if we come back to the front piece now, let's just pop the uh, lid on there for a second. That one should be OK now. So this one now will fit nicely just inside the aperture with a little tiny. You can just see that there's a gap all the way around there, which means it's not going to interfere with the mechanism because this one's going to stick on here. When we open the card, you've got that movement for it to come through the aperture. So what we want to do, rather than guessing where this needs to be, well, there's two choices, really. You can turn it over so that you know that your glue needs to stop when it gets to that fold line. This side doesn't need any glue on because when we open it up, this is actually the internal part of the card. So I only want to stick it to this side. So you can either put it in position and flick it over or you can put your glue into this section here. Now, I tend to work this way and I tend to put it in position here so that I can see where I'm going. I'm going to stay with that precision tip and I'm just coming down in a line level with where that fold line is here. You could use double sided tape for this or your red line tape, however you prefer. But again, I just think the wet glue gives you that little bit of insurance that if something's not quite straight, you've got a second or two. So I'm going to line it up at this edge with that gap all the way around. And then I've got it nice and straight in the aperture there. And then just give that a second for that tacky glue to grab. And I'm just going to pop the block on it again for a minute while I go through the other embellishments and then we'll come back to that. So all I've got left in my pot then is as I made some little flowers. So I've got four. And this was just some scrap cardstock that's slightly lighter than the matte layers that I've used. I was just trying to pick up the, the little polka dots in this paper. I've got some little tiny leaves and I'll show you the die set that I use for these. It's one that I reach for time and time again. And then I've got an extra little sentiment that's going to go with the, uh, the design. So I think I've shown you this one before. I use this quite a lot. It's a Sizzix die designed by Tim Holtz for Sizzix. And it is the small tattered florals. And there's a whole host of uh, metalwork in here. Loads and loads of different pieces, including the branch and everything. And it cuts out different styles of flowers. You've got three different styles of flowers, the leaves 
and the branch there so the ones that I've gone with this time are this row here I've not used the largest one because that was a little bit I did make the largest one here but it was a bit big for the design that I was looking for so I've gone with the uh, the smaller section there so I'll pop that one to one side and this is what we're going to use to decorate the rest of the card with so I've got flowers I've got my little leaves now the flowers I went round the edge of it with the parakeet ink just to link it together you can just see on the edge of the flowers there's a tiny little bit of ink there pop some pearls in the center and then the leaves because I didn't want to introduce another color I've just used the gray just to highlight the edge of the leaves there on that side and then we've got our sentiment at the ready so all I'm going to do now then and again it's making sure that you're working either on the frame or inside on the panel you don't want anything to go over the edge here because when this opens we don't want to restrict it coming out through the aperture if you've got flowers hanging over the edge of here they're going to catch on the aperture so I'm going to be very careful that where I place these is actually inside that design so again I'm just going to stay with the uh, precision tip there and making sure that these fit nicely inside that mat layer And I'm going to use the three largest ones to make a little cluster on the top here, like so. Again, making sure that they stay inside that design. I just felt that it needed a little bit of something else. And then I'm going to use the smaller one at the other side to offset this cluster here. So I've got three, like so. And then I'm going to bring the little baby one over here just to offset that design so that there's a little bit on each side. So again, this one's just going to sit in the gap there. It just nestled nicely in there. And then again, with the leaves, I just want a little tiny bit of glue on the base here. I tend to just use this and then tuck it behind. So we're going to put one of them. And again, making sure that it stays inside that mat layer. And then I've got a little baby one, which we're going to put in there. So that one's just going to nestle in there as well. Just press it down with my tweezers so that that glue grabs. And then I've got a third one again, just to sort of echo it at the other side. And that one's going to come under here and just tuck that one under that side. So we've got that little sort of triangular shape here. Just press it down again. And they're all within. There's nothing hanging over the edge of that square that we created for the panel, the lever there. So that's the front bit. And then inside, I just felt again that it needed something here. Uh, on this one, I think it says lots of love. And then the other stamp that I had available was love you. They were both from the same set there. So I've got some tape on the back of that one. And we are just going to pop that one across that die cut that we put in place here and I'm going to centre it over the die cut just to add that little bit of something inside okay now I haven't made the uh, the sentiment for the back of this one the the greeting uh, because this is a, a, a replica of it I'm going to leave it at that stage and then I'll show you on the main one the extra bits that I did okay so you've got that lovely five and three quarter inches square opens as a normal card does but then you've got that lever section that pops out through the aperture there like so and then now you can pop extra papers in here if you wish I didn't really think that was necessary and again like I said I chose to put my sentiment on the back but you could pop it on this panel here if you so wished so let me just pop that one to one side and bring the original one back in. You will not be surprised to know that there was some added bling. Those of you that know me know that I cannot finish a card without adding the extra bling on. So I just went through the old stash. I've got a pot of, this is just one of many, many pots, but this has got lots of different colours in. And I found those gorgeous um, deep teal ones that have got like an Aurora Borealis effect on them and then just added some paler ones in there 
to complement. So again, cascading across that sentiment just to draw your eye into the sentiment. Had to stop myself from putting them elsewhere. I did wonder whether it needed any up here, but I thought, no, stop, Jan. Know when to walk away. This is my learning experience. I have to walk away sometimes. And then on the reverse of this one, I just went with that same matte layer. So this is the same size as the blue piece here. And we had sort of, oh, it's just slightly five and six, uh, five and five eighths. I've gone right up to the edge with that one, five and five eighths and just left that little skinny border. And then my inside piece is five and a half. OK, and I've just stamped on there. And then this was the smallest of the flowers that were in that set. If I just bring this, this back in, there were some little tiny, tiny babies here which I cut and I felt that they were a little bit too small for what I wanted on the front. So I've just added them in the back here again, just linking it all together. And this is where I will write my message for uh, for Sam. So, yeah, that's what she's going to have for her birthday. She will have had this by the time this video goes out. Um, it will have been the weekend previously. As I'm filming it, her birthday is tomorrow. So I'm sort of a week in advance. Uh, so, yeah, I hope she likes it. And again, the lever card. I have deliberately not put any pearls inside here because I because this folds flat. I didn't want the height of the pearls inside. And that's going to be my my design for her. So I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial. Please consider giving it a thumbs up. I know there's a lot of you watching the uh, the tutorials, which I thoroughly appreciate. Just giving it that thumbs up if you have enjoyed it does help the channel. It helps with the um, all the algorithms that, that YouTube use. So, yeah, if you can give it a thumbs up at the bottom, I would very much appreciate it. And, you know, subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying the tutorials. Click that notification bell, which will tell you the next time I upload a new video. I do try and do at least two a week. So I normally upload midweek, either Tuesday or Wednesday. And then again on the Saturday, occasionally there are some extras uh, thrown in there. It depends on my own time uh, here. So, yeah, thank you very much for joining me today. And I will be back very, very soon with the next tutorial. So bye for now.